The Mandalorian Season 3 finale's ending is kinda strange. In the final episode of Season 3, the dust has settled and Grogu is now officially a Mandalorian apprentice. And with Moff Gideon supposedly dead, it does have this weird sense of finality. I mean, the Mandalorians have reclaimed their home world and in the process defeated the one Imperial hell bent on removing them. And the whole drama with the Darksaber seems to be solved completely. With the blade destroyed, it doesn't really leave a lot of basis for a potential Season 4 to be based on. And as suggested by the armor, Mando won't have much to do about the overall revival of the Mandalorians. Instead, he'll be more focused on raising raising Grogu, so in terms of the big picture, I don't really see him hanging around Mandalore all that often. And so if season 4 doesn't happen, I actually think that narratively speaking, it does make a whole lot of sense. I mean, given the way things ended, you do get a sense of happily ever after. And if the story of the Mandalorian ends here, you can't really complain. But that being said, there was a small little detail that might hint to not necessarily bigger things, but a return to the way things were. A sort of reset button, so to speak. And this moment comes when Mando talks to Carson Teva looking for work. And the agreement that the two of them reach is an interesting under the table contract where Mando acts as a New Republic enforcer in exchange for credits, patrolling and running missions in the Outer Rim, although not officially sanctioned by the New Republic. And what's interesting about this is that it's actually very familiar with something that we heard back in Season 2, but directed at someone else completely different. And this scene in Season 2 was originally meant to start off another spin-off show titled The Rangers of the New Republic, a show that would have probably centered around the character of Cara Dune. However, all that went into the bin following her firing by Lucasfilm. And for the longest time, the project was thought to be dead. And so what I think is happening as Mando and Grogu's story moves forward is that the showrunners will start to incorporate elements of what was created for Rangers of the New Republic. Especially story beats and ideas, but instead of focusing it on Cara Dune, Mando and Grogu will take the limelight. And so while the title Rangers of the New Republic might not be used, I think lots of its original story elements will. I mean, if you think about how the last episode tried to set things up, it sounded like this is precisely what they were trying to do. Sure, there were a few subtle changes like having Mando be an unofficial under-the-table enforcer for the New Republic in the Outer Rim, but that's really slight modifications needed to fit the new character. I mean, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for Mando to just sign up with the New Republic, but it would be in line with his character if it was still a case-by-case -case basis. Not to mention, if Mando wanted to just bring Grogu along on bounty hunting missions to give him lessons, then he could have easily just gone back to regular bounty hunting jobs. There really wasn't any need to attach himself specifically to the New Republic. And so for me, all this points to the sign that the showrunners are trying to bring back Rangers of the New Republic in some shape or form. Except this time it will be explored through Mando and Grogu, and I think that the decision to do so would make a lot of sense. In fact, I actually went back and watched season 1 of The Mandalorian after the finale and I think part of the charm that has been temporarily replaced by all this high level polished action of season 3 is the original grit and edge of the show. In fact, if you go back and watch the earlier episodes, a lot of the style in terms of surrounding and dialogue was very much inspired by old westerns. And this tense feeling that you had watching Mando navigate through the Outer Rim and the Underworld was sort of lost as we headed to towards the Mandalore plot. Much of season 3 was actually spent on very well polished, rich looking worlds and with Navarro being so well developed, the original griminess of the show was lost. But while that is not to say that the gradual shift in direction was a bad thing, I do find myself missing the simpler days, where it really was just Mando out on the hunt for a bounty and with Grogu by his side. And I think what this potential pivot into Rangers of the New Republic can do is precisely just that. Running missions for the New Republic in the Outer Rim will place Mando and Grogu back into the heart of the Underworld. Dealing justice and fighting for the law would be a very good way of reintroducing the scum and villainy that made us all enjoy the Mandalorian in the first place. 
Going to places where the New Republic can touch and local crime lords are king will do precisely just that. Season 4 of The Mandalorian, if it will still be called that, could return to the serialized style of storytelling with each episode its own unique story, visiting new planets, meeting new characters with enough of an underlying plot to stitch it all together. And while I did enjoy Season 3 for the most part, there were moments where I did feel that Mando was slightly out of place, especially during conversations about the fate of Mando Mandalore and the question of who should lead the Mandalorians, Mando was almost always shoved to the side, giving other characters like Bo-Katan and the armor bigger roles and a bigger say in shaping the plot. For the most part, Mando was really just there to support whatever was happening. From a character perspective, this makes a lot of sense. Mando is a character that isn't destined for bigger galactic-wide things. The very nature of his character is more down-to-earth. He's meant to be your everyday Joe, except with Beskar armor, a green rodent, and being a killing machine. He really doesn't have designs for greater power or glory. He really just wants to get by and make ends meet. Which also means that any time we were in conversation about who should lead Mandalore, he really doesn't do much or say much because he doesn't want to. And while this does make sense from a character perspective, I do feel that it took a bit of agency away from Mando's character. Season 2 arguably nailed this element best. As Mando tries to return Grogu to the Jedi, he also comes up against obstacles like the Razor Crest barely hanging on or being forced to save your local town, things which make the show a Star Wars version of an old western. And while this doesn't mean that Mando can't be part of galactic-wide events or conflicts, I do feel that he is better suited in the underworld. I personally think that that is where his character flourishes the most and where the dynamic between him and Grogu can be better explored and developed. Another point to note is that by making Mando essentially a new Republic Ranger, it also brings up the possibility of him showing up in other shows. With him and Grogu constantly moving around, I wouldn't be surprised if he popped up in the Skeleton Crew or Ahsoka as a new Republic Ranger. So really, this just might be the showrunner's way of giving Mando an excuse to show up in other places, especially when it comes to New Republic business. So if this is indeed what the showrunners intend to do, and the Mandalorians will be incorporating elements of the Rangers of the New Republic moving forward, I think this would be the best way to go, allowing Mando and Grogu to return to a life of bounty hunting without backtracking on what has come before. So all in all, I look forward to it, and I really hope that this is indeed the case. Anyways, that's all for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. I'm the Lost Acolyte, and I have spoken.